What's going on boys, Nuggets here, welcome back to another video and today's video we're going to go over all the new passing types from extended cross zones, outside of foot shot passes, semi assisted passes and we're going to go through all of that today. This video does contain photos from a product in development and is not reflective of the final product so things like gameplay, content tuning, assets and player ratings may differ in FIFA 23 but let's go straight into passing. So the first new feature in FIFA 23 is the outside the foot passes on demand. Now previously you can do an outside the foot pass but you couldn't do it consistently. And now you can have a look at this example here. If I slow this down, you can see Robertson, he does an outside the foot pass all the way to the left-hand side down the wing. Now it's very, very simple to do. All you have to do is you hold the L2 button or the LT button if you're on Xbox, and then you just do the pass. So you can do, for example, a through ball pass, or you can do a lob pass, or you can do a regular pass. Any form of pass, when you press the L2 button or LT for your next box, you request an outside the foot pass, and that's where you get that Travella type pass, that Charisma type pass. And also the accuracy of outside the foot passes increased with players that have the outside the foot shot trait. So if you do this with that, you could just hold L2. And don't forget, it's also shared with the flare passes, but if you do a high power pass, you basically get a higher chance of that L2 pass working. So if you go into a game it doesn't work, just do an L2 pass with a lot more power and it should work. Another thing they've done this year is they extended the regular crossing zone to allow for more crosses at the top of the box. Now as you can see on the pitch over here, you can see highlighted is the new extended cross zone that they've added in. This is basically inspired by world class players like Hyung Min Son who perform dangerous crosses to their teammates from this area. We've even seen some of the best players in history like Xavi do these passes as well so very very effective pass so it makes it easier for you to get those balls inside the box I would say it's very very beneficial to use it if someone is running deep late inside the box where you can get a quick pass to them and they can score a goal relatively unmarked because it does actually quite surprise your opponent and also, if you do want to get better at FIFA, don't forget to join my FIFA School Series, patreon.com forward slash nil guys. We've got more complete in-depth guys like this, including hundreds of other videos for you to get better at FIFA 23. These go beyond the scope of YouTube videos. And don't forget, if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money for my FIFA School Series, patreon.com forward slash nil guys. Link is down below in the description. For those of you that struggle with passing, there's a new feature called the Pass Receiver Lock and it's called a Power Up. Now this is the earliest possible receiver lock. And basically what this does is a new setting that will select the pass receiver as soon as the pass button is released or when the power bar reaches full power. So you can see when I put the control on the screen, if I do a high power shot, you can see the game switches to the right player for me straight away. So those of you that have struggle and have issues with, for example, the ball coming too quickly, this would be an adequate solution. We then also have the halfway point, the animation start. That is when the pass receiver is locked early at the time when the kick animation begins. So that is as soon as the kick animation begins, the pass receiver locks. It's just not late, but not too early. It's kind of the halfway point. And on the opposite spectrum, we do have late. And this is when the pass receiver locked as late as possible, close to when the ball is being kicked. Now, I use this feature quite a lot. Um, the reason why is if I make a pass, I can change direction last minute. So have a look when I make a pass with Casemiro and I quickly change direction last second, I can just basically pass to another player if someone else or my opponent is marking a passing lane. So I would say try the power up setting if you do find passing to be a bit of an issue if, or for example, you don't know which player to switch to in advance and it can definitely help with passing. There's also a new setting in FIFA 23 called the semi-assisted lobs. Now, this is a new setting that takes into account more of the player's aim with the left analog stick than, for example, a traditional assisted lob setting. So this way you can get those beautiful pings where you actually want to aim the ball. So let's say you want to lob the ball from side to side or you want to lob the ball to a certain point in the match. This is when you just aim the ball, literally pressing a square button, and you can lob the pass anywhere. You get that more of that manual aim to get the ball precisely where you want it to go. And just like the semi-assisted lobs for the last setting, there's also a new semi-assisted lob through passes. Now this is a new setting again that takes into account more of the aim of the left analog stick than just the regular assisted lob through passes. Now what I'm referring to lob through passes, I'm talking about the L1 plus triangle. So you may have seen balls from last year in FIFA 20, 22 should I say, where you do an L1 plus triangle ball and it's much more effective. Well this year it's even more effective because you can manually aim the passes so you can decide where you want that ball to go, where you want it to go exactly to get that precise ball into the striker running it behind. In fact you can see from some of these goals that I conceded or when the ball goes through should I say, my opponent did the same thing to me so it is definitely a very effective thing and I would say do you know what, I'll make one prediction now. This will definitely be one of the metas this year. Lob through pass can also be set to manual and assisted, but I think sometimes manual just gives you too less control. At least with semi-assisted, you do have some assistance, 
but at least the ability to aim it yourself. So we know what's changed with semi-assisted lobs and lob through passes, but what about just regular through passes or regular through balls? Well, there's an improved semi-assisted through pass system. Now there's a less assistance in certain situations and cases, mainly if the player's aim is too accurate or not accurate enough, giving more control and allowing players to find new possibilities. Now what exactly does this mean? Now basically when you use that triangle button, which is a through ball or Y if you're on Xbox, what you're doing is you're allowing the game to make a pass but what they've done is that they put a bit more on the onus of the individual mainly on the aim now the reason why i like this effectively is that you can get the through balls in areas that you couldn't get before so what i would say is i'm very happy with this because an improved semi-assisted through passes semi-assisted lob through passes and semi-assisted lobs introduces more of a skill gap inside the game you might have seen that more with semi shooting as well if you haven't seen that video don't forget to check that out on my channel. Um, so the game is going more towards a manual approach, which is actually what I like in improving the skill gap. And I would say this year, passing is going to be a bit more difficult. In the background, I've got some gameplay for you just to show in a regular game. Now, don't take too much notice of the way that I'm playing. Um, while I'm just trying to explain this footage, just have a look at how passing is. I believe passing this year is going to be actually quite difficult. The reason why is the left analog stick with technical dribbling. I don't know if you've seen that video on technical dribbling. Make sure you check out my video for more information in regards to that. But you need to understand and master when to take a movement, when to take a touch to make a pass. I think that's going to be the biggest hurdle. So if you're still watching this video at this point, I want you to go into FIFA 23 and just in the beginning, just go into kickoff and just practice passing the ball around. Play against a legendary opponent or ultimate even and just practice trying to get the ball through the gaps. The reason why I say this is technical dribbling can of all affect your aim alongside passing because you have to face a player to make a pass to them. You can't, for example, face one way they make a backwards pass. That's probably the most common issue that I found in FIFA 22 is that people were just literally facing away from a player and then making a pass. And I'm also going to explain something to you that's very, very important. When you're making a pass, not only is it facing a player and then making a pass the direction you're facing, there's also the stats itself. I think also in this FIFA, it's going to have the same thing they had last year. Don't forget, before back in FIFA 19, all you needed was a short passing stat. Whereas nowadays, you need an aggregation of all the stats, you know, aggregation of vision, of short passing, long passing, of curve. So all those things take into account together. So what I'd recommend is when you go into FIFA 23, just put everything some some sometimes a bit on manual. Now you might think, why would I suggest that? Just go into a kickoff game and play everything on manual. I just want you just to get a bit of a feel. Now you don't have to do this, but the reason why I say this is if you go to one extreme, it's actually much easier. The reason why is if you put like, even think about shooting, if you put your shooting on semi, a lot of people that aim towards the corner flag thinking that will go into the corner of the goal, as you can see in some of these examples, but you see, I've just missed open shots here. What it is with aiming, you just have to be a bit more gentle on the left down on stick, almost like you caress it into a small direction with minuscule changes. Like think about semi shooting or the power shot. You don't actually aim at the corner flag, you just ever so slightly move your left down on stick to the, play, to the goalkeeper's left or right. So there's not that much of a wide change. So that's why I'd recommend just putting everything on manual just for like five minutes or so, get a bit of practice, see how it works, and then dial it back to semi. That's what I did, and I found that's a very effective way of learning how to pass. Anyway, I was hoping you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, if you want to see more passing tutorials and more in-depth guides where I explain this in more detail, don't forget my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash no guys. The link is down below in the description. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.